Yeah, oh, there's another rocket on us. It's fine. Just cranking that engine up even higher. We're running it at like 3 million times turbo. This is awesome. Uh, uh, the rocket is inside the... What? The rocket is inside the plane. Okay, that's it's fine. Uh, it's fine. It didn't hit hard enough. It's just sort of in the plane. We've got a missile passenger now. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic with another build that we started in a stream but it has changed a lot since the stream and that is this twin engine propeller plane. So I streamed this a little while ago and we got through it in the stream and this plane actually only flies with the wings and rotating these two propellers so it was really really awesome but I've gone back and I've changed so much on this plane I can't wait to show you guys and of course because everyone seemingly loves blowing up pretty much everything that we ever build. I I've spawned three homing missile turrets around the map. So first we'll fly into the air and just sort of do a test round and then we'll activate the homing missile turrets and see how long we can survive. So during the stream, we pretty much got most of the plane done. We left the interior blank and it wasn't really painted, but the shape was pretty much here. The only difference you might notice on all the wings and the tail pieces is that they're all covered in the wing blocks now. So originally we just had a wing sort of inside a hollow piece. So it would be like a hollow wooden wing with just wing blocks inside of it but that wasn't really enough lift to actually get the plane to fly slow enough so I decided to go back and actually cover the wings so now it's three layers of wings it would be a wing on the bottom a wing inside and then a wing on the top as well as inside the entire fuselage here there's wings in the floors and this piece up here is actually a wing piece as well just to try and really help give as much lift as possible to this plane because it really really needs it based on the weight and then of course in the back here we've got the same thing wings covering the tail and you'll notice the control surfaces are a lot bigger now so this back fin piece here is pretty much the size of like a small plane wing it's huge but it needs to be that big just to actually be able to manipulate this large plane as it flies around. Same sense with the tail, it's very, very large. And then with the ailerons here on the end, same thing. And of course, everything's controlled by smart engines, so it was able to be calibrated and adjust the strength so the bearings don't kind of wobble around. And it's really, really powerful stuff. Really, the easiest way to look at this plane, though, is just to get in and fly it. So it's got identical controls for both the pilot and the co-pilot. You can fly in either seat. And my favorite feature of this plane is the braking system. So we do use a drag reducer block to actually allow the propellers to fly a little bit more. With the drag reducer block, the propellers kind of keep the power of the plane up a little bit longer but the problem with that is if we turn up the power of these engines that you won't really stop so we can turn on the engines here we'll just spin them up to speed a little bit and we'll move and now if we kill the engines you'll see we'll kind of glide for a long time and that was a bit of a problem but if you apply the brakes you can see by pressing seven it'll actually stop them now those two flaps on the wings deploy but that's really more for a visual thing the brakes are actually on the back two wheels and what we're doing is we're using a smart engine to set the power to zero if you have a smart engine hooked into a wheel but you give the smart engine a power of zero the wheel just free floats as if there's no engine on it at all but then as we apply a power to that smart engine we can actually use the wheel as a braking force so it's really really cool for planes like this to have sort of a realistic braking system where the wheel will free float as long as you want but whenever you press that seven button it'll deploy the two wing flaps just so you can tell that the brakes are on and of course those wheels now have locking power so even if we ramp up the propellers you'll see we won't move anywhere for a little bit until we overcome that braking force and we're slowly slowly just kind of dragging the wheels along so the controls on this plane are pretty simple one will increase the throttle and start both the propellers spinning two will decrease the throttle or eventually spin them in reverse if you really go that far and originally we just had this as one set throttle but i realized when you're trying to land you kind of need to actually be able to decrease the throttle and increase it and you can hold one or two to just continue ramping that up and and down and it's pretty simple stuff and then three of course is the kill switch four and five do the tail uh, a and D do the ailerons and W and S do the pitch on the back tail there. Six is the landing gear deploy so we can just pop those down. We can put them back up and no problem there. Seven is of course those brakes and eight will just open and close that side door in case you forget to you know close it when you get in. So a pretty simple plane. It's relatively easy to fly and we'll just uh, try and take it off here and try and come back in for a landing. So originally when I thought about doing this plane, I thought about putting a whole autopilot system on it, but you'll notice when we start flying here and as we take off, it actually needs a fair amount of space just to fly around and the map feels really, really small. These propeller planes, they're kind of large and they're really, really awesome, but because they can't hover in one spot, 
they actually do feel like they take up almost the entire map. You can see we're still holding the throttle. Now that we're up in the air, we'll let go of the throttle and uh, let those propellers spin as fast as they want to there. And I believe we can press six and just bring the landing gear up. And you can see already the map, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but below the waterline there, there is the outer fence of the map and it does feel really, really small. So we are flying a lot slower than it was in the stream, but it still has to maintain a fair amount of speed. And actually, because we're in the air now, we can probably decrease the throttle a little bit. And you can tell if you're at a good throttle because it's kind of balanced. So if you're going too fast, it'll pull up. If you're going too slow, it'll dip down. But if it maintains level flight, then you know you're at a good throttle. And you can see we got a turn already coming to the edge of the map. So it is very, very small on the map. But this plane is super maneuverable and it's really, really easy to fly. And it really feels good like flying a plane of this size. It doesn't feel like it's too nimble for its size. Of course, it does have infinite throttle range. So we can just continuously increase those engine spinning speed as fast as we want. We can also go into full reverse if we wanted to, but that's why we've got that lovely kill switch three. And in fact, on the very back of the plane, which you can't really see, there's also a white button right under the tail. Because it uses the memory blocks from the mod pack, it will actually remember the throttle you last had it at if you don't use the kill button. So underneath the tail, there is a kill button in case, you know, the plane gets flying away from you, it runs away. You can just hit the kill switch out in behind and that way the plane will stop moving. But it's a really, really cool plane. Some Sometimes it gets these random bursts of lag. I think it's just too many scripts calculating or something like that, but it's a really, really fun plane to fly. And I really enjoyed making a propeller plane that actually could use the wing mod to fly with, you know, complete thrust just based on propeller movement. It's a little bit difficult to tell your height sometimes when the entire background is blue, but I really like this sort of custom map for testing planes just because it's got the nice flat runway in the middle and really no obstacles around it, but uh, it is definitely a little bit difficult. We're still coming in a little too high. All right, let's press six here, deploy the landing gear, and uh, let's just hold two here, bring the throttle down. We'll press seven, activate those brakes right away. Oh, we're coming in way too fast. Oh boy, that's, that's a, it's fine. It's good landing, it was solid, perfect. 10 out of 10. So this plane definitely has the potential to make a good landing. Uh, I have I have yet to do it. And you can see now I didn't hit the kill switch. So the engines are still running. And if we were to just take this off the lift, I'm pretty sure it's going to try and drive away from us. And you can see there, yeah, it will. So we can really simply take it on the lift. We hit this white button in the back. And now it's actually killed the engine throttle again. And if we take it off the lift, problem solved. So if that ever happens to you, that's what that button is there for. So we're going to have our plane and we'll actually just idle it up, but we'll leave the brakes on and that way we'll have at least some speed going into it. So we're not coming from a dead stop and hopefully it's not moving too much because we're going to have 60 seconds. So there we go. We've got a little bit of speed already built up. So let's just go and activate this turret. Oh, and before we do that, I guess, because the homing missiles do track players, let's just simulate some passengers here. So we'll put a player indicator block right at each seat. And that way, you know, the homing missiles aren't just going to track me. They're going to try and track the closest player. So they'll actually try and aim for the fuselage, maybe hit some of these wings. Who knows? It'll be good stuff. So let's just, uh, let's just go activate this now. All right. So we're going to hit the green button here. And then we've got this remote control. It'll be 60 seconds on each one. And then they will each have eight homing missiles ready to go. And they will fire when we come within a thousand blocks. So here we go. Let's run. Hopefully we can actually get up into the air. I'm really worried about the one at the end of the runway there. I feel like it's just going to get a cheap shot, but definitely want to see what happens here. All right. So I don't remember all the buttons. Uh, seven, seven breaks off. Good. Eight. Lift up, hold one, hold one. Oh, I'm still holding the throttle. It might not be enough. Oh, sounds like one of them already fired. Or blew up. Did it just blow up the whole thing? Okay, well, we kind of clipped that tree. It's fine. All right, we're up. I don't see any rockets. So I don't I don't think there's any chasing us. There was an explosion there, so I don't... I don't know what that was. Curious if one of the launchers, did it explode with maybe a missile inside of it? And then that's it? Like that whole launcher's disabled? I mean, there's... Oh, that one's, that one's fired. Okay. Uh, oh boy. Uh, oh man. Oh, <gasps> it didn't detonate. No, we hit it. We're going down. Uh-oh.
So obviously I need to pay a little bit more attention to where I'm flying rather than just watching the missiles. But I have set the whole thing back up here. We've got the transmitter set up again. Another one over there and over there. And hopefully we can do all this. Let's just make sure 60 seconds. All right. And here we go. So we'll press that and we'll try and get up in the air here before anything happens. I really hope this works. We've got all our passengers. And uh, okay, here we go. Eight. Good. That's good. Brakes are off. Perfect. Full throttle. Just hold one. Full pitch back. All right. Keep holding one. Keep holding one. Come on. Get up there. Get up there. Don't hit that. I, I don't know why I put those trees at the end of that runway. Honestly, this plane is too wide. All right. We're up in the air, though. We're good. And we'll just deploy our landing gear. Perfect. All right. I think we're good. We'll just wait until we see some rockets fire. Should be 60 seconds. We've got our passengers. We're flying around. This is uh, Con Airlines Flight something. I don't see any rockets. Have they moved yet? This plane feels really, really good, though. I mean, despite it being a large plane, it just feels really, really smooth when you fly it. It doesn't feel like it fights you at all. It doesn't really, you know, have any issues like that. It just, it feels like you're flying a plane, really, in my opinion. Oh, there's one. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, boy, that was a direct hit. Oh, that was... Oh, we're going down. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, that destroyed so much. So I'm pretty sure that one was targeting me or maybe one of the players in the front, but look at that one homing missile, it destroyed half that engine, completely wrecked the propeller, destroyed half that wing. Like there's no way this thing would have even flown, even if it if it was alive with both propellers. Like there's so much wing destroyed, but let's just despawn this plane here. Let's just delete this and we'll actually just spawn a new plane underwater here and just try and maybe take off in that direction. All right, so we've got a new plane here, and to maximize the potential for survival, we're going to put only player indicators maybe, like, in the back here. Actually, that's just going to destroy all the controls. But you know what? Let's just put a couple in the back, and hopefully the missiles will hit maybe back here somewhere and not actually completely destroy us in one shot. But the whole plane is kind of made of wood, so that might not have been the best idea. But anyways, here we go. Um, we're going to have to fly past that turret there. You know what? Let's just, let's just give her seven. Hold one, and when we see the brakes slowly start to let go, then we'll release seven and hopefully be at a good speed already on the props. Just like that, perfect. And uh, let's just get up into the air, out of the water. Uh, it doesn't really make sense, but it's fine. Oh my goodness, okay, landing gear up. All right, that one's, it's already fired. All right, faster. We need more speed. Yeah, it's, it's tracking. Holy cow, those things are so quick. Oh, it took out half the tail. It's okay, we're still flying. We can still fly with half a tail. We still have both prop controls. We still have half a tail control. Perfect. This is great. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Don't take out the other half of the tail. We need this half of the tail. Okay. It just kind of bounced off the... Okay. No, it's good. We're... Oh, oh, that's the other half of the tail. Oh, we're... Oh, that's all the controls, too. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, that was... That was... That... So I would like to go back and redo an autopilot system at some point in time, but I don't think I'm going to do it on this plane. As much as I would like to, this plane is just too large and it's too sluggish and the map is just too small. So the autopilot would really just be flying in circles the whole time. And a lot of the time you'd run into issues where unless you center yourself properly in, in the middle of the map, you'd kind of just fly into the wall. So I definitely want to make an autopilot at some point in time on a prop plane. But I think I want to do it on a plane that's just a little bit smaller. But of course, I'll still upload this to the workshop. And I encourage you guys to download it. Let me know what you think. And oh, apparently there's still a rocket. I guess that one on the island still. Oh, oh, we lost. We lost. Are we still flying? We've got like massive cabin depressurization. And that, I don't know what's going on with that propeller. I think it's offset. We're still flying though. We can still do this. We can do this. It is fine. All right, so this is totally possible. Um, apparently, we didn't need all those other blocks. This is just... I, I did crank up the engine speed quite a bit, but let's see if there's any more rockets left in that missile chamber. I don't think there is. I think they're all out now. But, you know, very possible to fly this plane missing. I mean, we definitely still have that second engine doing something, but it's missing, I think, a few prop pieces. Oh, no, it's still got, it's still got ammo. That's not good. All right, well, let's just keep doing laps here. But of course, download this plane from the workshop and let me... Oh, now we lost the engine. That was the engine. All right, let's crank this one up higher. Can we do that? Is that enough to compensate? Compensate. Yes. Yeah, oh, there's another rocket on us. It's fine. Just 
cranking that engine up even higher. We're running it at like 3 million times turbo. This is awesome. Uh, uh, the rocket is inside the... What? The rocket is inside the plane. Okay, that's it's fine. Uh, it's fine. It didn't hit hard enough. It's just sort of in the plane. We've got a missile passenger now. Is that the last one too? Let's go really close this turret just to make sure. Look at this. We cranked up the one engine so high that the plane can still fly, but we're kind of constantly doing this uh, left turn thing. I can't really stop that. So it's just the way to... I think it's out. Oh no, it's got... Oh, it's got another one. That wasn't... That's not the way to test SAM turrets. All right. Um, we're just gonna... We're just gonna... We can't outrun these things either. They are so fast. Oh, oh, that was... Uh, that was it. That was awesome. Of course, download it from the workshop. I encourage you guys to try flying it out. It might lag a little bit when you spawn it, but it will go away, and it's actually pretty fun to fly. I really enjoy flying it, and it was definitely a lot of fun to make. It did take a fair amount of time to tune it and kind of get it to fly really, really well, but I definitely want to work on more propeller-powered vehicles and definitely want to do some smaller ones that have an autopilot that actually can kind of, you know, fit on this map. But of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.